All right, so you guys got two handouts today. Um, first one is assignment 204. And so I promised that there would be an assignment 204, and lo and behold, there is one. Uh, important things to note, this is for two light fixtures, not one. And those light fixtures, one needs to be an interior light fixture, the other needs to be an exterior light fixture. Okay, so two different places. You need to do two renderings of each light fixture. Okay, so a daytime rendering and a nighttime rendering of each light fixture. Okay, no surprise that I would make you do this, right? Daytime rendering, we're going to see what the materials look like. Nighttime rendering, we're going to see how the light casts when it's dark. Okay, both, both of which are important and a good test of what you can do and are you understanding V ray lighting, etc. These are both due, it's two separate posts, one post for each light fixture. Those are both due on Monday, the 4th of May. All right, so it's like two weeks away. Yeah, not next Monday, the Monday after. Okay? So, you guys can read through that, but you're already well on your way. We already talked about light fixtures. You already did your first example light fixture last class. Yeah? Monday is the second. Wednesday is the fourth. Hold on. Let me look. I'm just looking at calendar. I believe you. <laughs> it's probably me. Then it's Wednesday the fourth, not Monday. Okay? I said, so it's two weeks from today. So that's my mistake. I try to cross-reference all this stuff, but you get, you get extra days, right? Life is never that bad. Okay, so we've got 204. You guys are going to start working on that. And then we're going to start working on 223, exercise 223 uh, today, which is essentially doing an interior rendering of your building during the day. But chances are, when you're inside your building during the day, we have a tendency to turn the lights on. Okay, So even if you are a master at daylighting, chances are people turn on lights anyway. Therefore, we're going to have some lights inside. But it's also a really good opportunity to start cleaning up and, and modeling interiors and adding things to your interiors like furniture and, and that sort of thing. So uh, I'm going to talk about, obviously, setting up a view putting some lights in, installing those lights, getting them to work, and then doing the rendering. But at the same time, I also want to start talking about how do you acquire um, you know, furniture and things to go in your model, et cetera. Now, all of you built a, chair, a, a table and a chair as your first assignment. You could, of course, use your own table and chair in your building. That would nothing but would be wrong with that. But you may find that you really want something else. And there are a variety of sites that are out there that you are free to download things from. One of those sites is a site called Flying Architecture, uh, flyingarchitecture.com. They have a great uh, resource of things. Um, if, for example, you click on sofas and armchairs, some of the stuff costs money. I'm not asking you to spend any money, but if you keep going, eventually you'll get to where it says download. Anything that says download is free, so you can download any of that stuff, which is a pretty good collection of, of things uh, that you can pick from that are free, which is great. So don't spend money. Use the free ones. Flyingarchitecture.com. Flying you do have to register with the site. It doesn't cost anything. They have a premium account that does cost things. You don't have to do that. Just do the basic account um, in order to download the stuff. Um, generally speaking, when you download it, it will show up as a zip package. And inside of that zip package, let me, right, you'll extract it, and you'll put it on your flash drive. I have a folder called Rhino Blocks that I tend to put these things in. Um, and so, for example, uh, I have a sofa here that I downloaded. Um, if the person who made it in the first place did a good job, they packed the material that came with it, which includes, in this case, the leather that they used, which is good. Uh, and they also included a .3dm file. Part of the reason I like Flying Architecture as a resource is because they do Rhino models. You don't have to do any, any adaptations to get it. The, you know, somebody did a 3D studio model and you have to work to get it to work. These are native Rhino models, which is great. So, but before I actually put it in my scene, I want to make sure that I open it and I make sure that the materials are signed correctly and I clean up the layers and it's ready to go as a block into my scene. So I'm going to go ahead and open this uh, couch file right now. And I haven't done anything to it. This is exactly as it came off the website. So we're going to find out a lot about it when it opens. All right, so it's, it's gone ahead and it's open. The first thing that I notice is the units are in millimeters, not in feet and inches. That's going to present a problem, right? 
So I need to change, and this is why you open it before you bring it in. Okay? I need to change the units. So we'll go up. I'm just going to type units. Maybe not. Let's try that again. Units. And I'm going to change from millimeters into architectural, or excuse me, inches. And I'll say, OK, I'm still apparently in AutoCAD from this morning, so I apologize. Model units change from millimeters to inch. Scale model by 0 0.0 whatever. I'm going to say no, because I'm guessing that it's still at its correct size. Okay? I will do a reference of this afterward and make sure that it actually measures out correctly. Right? So let me go ahead and do a distance. And we'll say, what is it from here to, say, there? OK, so I should have scaled, because it's 770 inches. Right? So let's back that one up. And let's try units again. <laughs> and let's go to inches. And we'll say OK. And yes, let's scale it. Uh, and let's zoom in on this little guy there. Yeah. And let's do distance. 30 inches. That seems about right, right? So always open it, always check it, right? All right, let's look at the layers. Oh, we've got all the default layers. That's not going to work for me. We need to have some organization here. So let's rename this to be sofa. And you guys know that I, I like to separate my things out uh, to be on their appropriate layers. So it looks like this person modeled the legs separately. So let's take all of the legs. Oh, good. It selected the whole frame, right? So we'll, we'll Move that onto layer one here, and we'll call that frame. All right, perfect. And these we will call, I don't know, leather. I would say cushions, but I'm sure I'll spell it wrong. So <laughs> we'll change the object layer. And we'll take these two, and we'll put them underneath the sofa layer. And we'll get rid of, oops, we'll get rid of layers three, four, and five. There we go. So again, clean. Okay. So now I have to make sure that they're on. And I also need to make sure that the materials are applied correctly to this. So let's load up some material. So I'll click on the V-Ray Material Editor. And it looks like there's some material that's already been loaded into the scene. The, the person who, who created it loaded some materials. My guess is that the Chrome will load up just fine, which it did. Okay. The leather probably won't. So if I go to preview, oh, shockingly, it did show up OK. All right, so that's a good thing. I have no idea what this default material is. My guess is that it's unnecessary. You can right click on scene materials, and you can choose to purge unused materials, which will get rid of materials that aren't in the scene. So there we go. We have chrome shiny, and we have leather. Let's make sure that these are applied to the, either to the objects or to the layers themselves. So let's take the leather, for example. Let me select the objects. And I'm going to look. And it's been applied by the object, not by the layer, which I'm OK with. Okay? And so basically, this one's ready. It's currently configured kind of right on top of the origin. I might want to move this so that maybe the center of this is at the origin. Oh, come on. There we go. 0, 0, 0. Zoom. All right. So there it is at the origin. I don't really care which rotation is because I'm going to have to adjust that later on. And now this is ready to be put into my, my actual scene. Okay. So I'll save this. I'll go to File, Save. And it looks like whoever created it was on Rhino 4. I'm OK upgrading it to Rhino 5 because that's what we have. So I'll go ahead and save as a Rhino 5 file. All right, so now that's been saved. And I'm going to jump over to my base. And we've talked a lot, and I've talked to a lot of you individually about organizing your files and where the blocks come in and that sort of thing. So the couch is very much part of the geometry of the, the building. right? It's an accessory to the building. So I'm going to put it inside the building, not inside the ultimate scene. Okay? So I can nest blocks. There's nothing wrong with that. And I'll go to File, or excuse me, Edit, Blocks, Insert Block Instance. And I will browse for nest 
my sofa here. And I'm going to link it as a reference. I'll say OK. And there it is. Now, I have to get inside of my building to figure out where it's going to go. So we'll put this downstairs. And so that it's on the corner here, we'll drop it there. And then we have to do a little bit of work to get it to fit where I want it to in the building. So let's do a rotate maybe around this point here. Oh, come on. Snap to my center. One eighty. Perfect. And we need to move this maybe over. I'm going to disable my snaps for a second as I adjust this. And we'll move it back toward the wall. Not bad. Okay. It may be helpful to look at this in the top view for a second. So I can judge how close to the wall it, it is actually getting. All right, so something like that. Okay, so I have the couch in. Now maybe it's time to open up a few other objects, like a chair or something like that, to help furnish out this little, this little study room, or whatever you want to call it. Okay, once I have this in my scene, it's a matter of starting to set up the scene now. Okay, so this is already set. I probably in, and this is a little bit of a, a decision that you have to make. Personally, I think I'm going to bring in the lights into this and then bring these into the, um, the final file. Um, you could bring the lights straight into the final scene. It's kind of up to you. Either way is okay. And I'm not liking my couch. It needs to move over. This is bugging me. It needs to be centered on my little art on the wall. That's better. Okay. So we'll, we'll put it there for right now. Okay. So I have this. I'm going to go ahead and save it. And then I can go to my final scene, and I can update it. So I'll go to Edit, Blocks, Block Manager. My linked file is newer. Let's go ahead and update it. We're going to replace all the existing materials. And it's now updated. And so if I were to switch to an inside view, there's that couch. right? So the block worked exactly like I wanted it to, to work. So let's jump back to my base model here. And let's start to put some lighting in to the inside. Now, one of the advantages to doing the lighting is that I can put it in right now, and I can ultimately use it for the night rendering. Right? So it's a good opportunity to go ahead and install it, and then you can always turn them on or turn them off, depending on whether you want the lights on or off or, or whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and start bringing those in. I'll start with the can light that I made last class. It's very simple. You don't have to use simple lights. You could use more complex lights. Just a good place to start. So I already have it saved, so I can just go straight to the import. Or excuse me, not import. Edit blocks, insert block instance. And we'll go ahead and browse, and I'll go to my flash drive. And I'll go find it from last class. So we were in 222. It was the 4-inch can light. There it is. We'll go ahead and say OK. Linked and referenced. I'll say OK. And now I need to be able to drop it in onto my ceiling. So let me turn on my snaps. And there it is. I'll drop it in. Let me move it. And sometimes it's helpful to just be outside. We'll move it over two feet there. And we'll move it again two feet this way. So there it is on my ceiling. Let's do a few more right? so that I can go across each side. Let's maybe copy this. And we'll go from right there. And we'll go over. I don't know, maybe four feet. It may be helpful to get outside here. And then maybe eight feet or something like that. Sometimes it's useful to see this in the top view so that we can kind of see where those are placed. There they are. All right. I'll go ahead and be done. And then I'll take that and that. 
and we'll go ahead and copy them. I'm going to type I for in place, and then I'll rotate from the center of this light fixture by negative 90 so that they're going off in that direction as well. Okay. Now, if I wanted these to, to line up better with my artwork on the wall, maybe I need to adjust the placement of them, but you guys get the idea. Okay. So that those are then placed in. Now, I'm going to take these light fixtures. Actually, you know what? Let's put one more over in this corner. All right, so let me go ahead and mirror. And I'm going to go from this center to that center. So I end up with one over here by the stairs. Okay. Now I'll take all of those light fixtures. And because I have a stacked floor plan, I'll take these and I'll copy them from one floor to the second floor. So let's go from right there to right there. So I have a second set up on the, the upper floor. Okay? I probably need to put some lights into this, this side as well, but for right now we'll leave it as, as those lights. Yeah, the upper ones aren't selected, but they're there. Okay, so let me save this. I'll go to File, Save. And once again, I'll go to my site. And then we'll go to Edit, Blocks, Block Manager. Linked file is newer. Let's go ahead and update that again. Perfect. We updated it, and now my lights came into the scene. So there they are. Okay. So next piece of this, I'm again in the site itself. The next piece of this is I have to start thinking about where, what do I want my view to look like? Where do I want to be looking? What do I want to be looking at? Okay. So I'll start with the camera, and I'll try to dive into my building. And sometimes this can be a little challenging to get the view that you want looking through your building, and you see it keeps kind of jumping one direction, the other direction. I want to be downstairs because that's the one that has my little couch in it. Right? And I also may want to adjust the angle of my view. So with nothing selected, if I look at the properties over here, my lens length is 28. We were using a 28 for outside. This might be an opportunity to do an 18, so we're a little bit wider. We see a little bit more of the room itself. Right? And so Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit more. But instead of zooming here because it's going to jump too far, I'm going to go ahead and show my camera. So let me go to Set Camera, Show Camera, which we did before. Remember, it doesn't show in this view, but it will show in the other views. So there it is. Right? And I can adjust where the point of this camera goes. Right? So I can move that point around a little bit. So let's move it. A little bit more like that, right about like that. Okay, so I'm adjusting this view by moving the camera here. If I wanted to move, say, the target of the camera, right, I could move this, and it would change what I'm looking at, right. But this is reasonable in terms of what I'm after. Okay, so now that I have the view the way I want it, I have to save the view. So I'm going to go to Set View, Named Views. Save, and we'll call this interior uh, room one. And I'll go ahead and say OK. So now I can come back to that interior room one layer and render and render and render as I make improvements to it. So if I were to render right now, the lights would be off, but I'd see the emissive lights because the emissive material came in, just like last, last class. But I still need to actually put the lights in. And so this is, remember, key. Everything in the scene is still the block except for the V-Ray lights. I'm going to put those in into this scene. So let me look at my layers here. Again, very clean set of layers that are accessible. All of this is all that grayed out is blocks, so I can't touch any of that. Let me create a new layer, and we'll call this lighting. And then let me create a sub-layer for spotlights, or let's call these four can lights, right? so that I know what type of lights I'm using. I'll make that active, and I'm going to go ahead and set up my V-Ray spotlights. So here's my spotlight. We'll go to the center of this, I hope. 
center keeps turning off on me here. Yeah. Oh, come on. There it is, center. Okay, my diameter is going to be two feet, and my height is going to be one foot. Again, I have to do this in the side view. There it is. And there's my little can light. Now remember that this has to go below wherever the light is. So we'll take this and we'll go ahead and move it down so that it's below my light. And then I'll come over to my properties and I'm going to edit my light properties. So my color first, 255, 214, 170. Oops. We'll say okay. My intensity, I have a fair number of lights, so I'm going to do maybe 40 watts, radiant power. My decay inverse square. Okay, so now that light is set up. So before I get too far along, I want to verify that this one light is working. So I'll turn on my options. And again, this was my scene from outside. I've shifted to inside. I may need to adjust the shutter speed, but I'm going to go with it for right now. But I am going to go to system and turn off distributed rendering because I just want a little small test render. And I'm going to go to output. And I'm not going to render a giant one, right? We're going to drop it down to maybe, I don't know, 300 by 148, something like that, just so that I could see that it's working. And then we'll go ahead and do a little test render. All right, so I learned a couple things in this test render. My emissive material is working. My light is working very nicely. But my background, HDRI, and my sun are either off or not working. So I have to go back and double check why I'm not seeing a background in here right now. Okay? But the light's working. So let's continue with the lights for a second. So what I did before was I took this, the, the um, block and I copied it off in space. So let me go into the top view. And let's copy it. And the first one was at four feet there. Second one was at eight feet there. So I've copied it. This one is at four feet there. This one is at eight feet there. Now I could also type in at eight feet, comma, eight feet. And I get the one that's over there. Okay. So now all of those lights are set. And by setting the light properties first, I don't have to go in and individually check them. Now remember, one of them could be burned out. I could have a problem with them, but we're going to assume for now that they're all going to work. So let me go ahead and select all of them. And since I'm here, I will also copy them all up so that they'll work on the upper story as well. So let me copy. right here. Oh, come on. There. To right. There. So now I have those in the up above. Okay. Yeah, you can see my camera move and all the rest of the views. Uh, in the interest of making that go away, I'll go, <laughs> I'll go to set camera and turn off show camera. Sorry about that. All right, so I have the lights installed in both of those locations. So if I went back to the interior room one, and I went to set view, interior room one, there it is. We see my lights. That should turn out the way we want it to. Now, I said I had some problems with my environment. They should have been set correctly uh, before, but for some reason it's missing the environment files. So let's go find those. And Malibu Overlook, and this was the environment. There we go. All right, so both of those there. Now, it lost the reference, but it didn't lose all the settings. So I'm going to leave the settings the same. We'll go ahead and say OK, and I'll close this. Now, I do want to confirm that my sun is on. And so I have a sun layer. It says it's on. Right, let's jump back for a second and 
I'm going to type SEL light, which is going to select all the lights. And it gave me 12 spotlights, but it didn't give me a sun because it should have been one directional light. So I think I still might be missing the sun. Turn everything on for just a second, and then, yep, I'm still only getting those 12 lights. So let's turn off those, turn off these, and I'm going to drop that sun back into the scene. So let me go and insert my sun. We'll go to San Francisco. Okay. Oops. Hold on a second. I forgot to set the time of day. Now I remember from last time when we did this that my time of day was in the afternoon. It was about four in the afternoon or so to match up with the HDRI. And we'll drop it in right there. So there it is. My sun's now in the scene. That's good. And let's make sure that the sun ends up on the sun layer. So let me change object layer. Oops. Helps if you select the sun. And then we'll change the object layer to be on the sun layer. All right, so now we'll come back to my interior room here. And again, my settings are still very, very small in the output because I don't want to do a final rendering until I confirm that it's working. And so they're small. And let's go ahead and do a little test render this time and see if we can see through the windows themselves. All right, so the sun added a lot more light to the scene, which is what we were after. We're getting some light that's, that's being cast by the sun on the floor. Make this a little bit bigger and we'll zoom in. Yeah, the lights slow everything down. Because we're calculating, we're calculating each individual light and how they interact. The the sofa's adding to it. And the background. You can throw some art in, right? Football game on the TV. Right. <laughs> And it's almost done. So this now feels like it should because I have the sun, I have the background, but I also turn the lights on. And this would be kind of a realistic daytime interior rendering. Lights are on. They're casting some light onto my, my art on my walls. Uh, but I have this big streak of sun flowing through my window up onto this wall, okay? which feels about right. So now that I'm happy with this particular scene, I can beef up this rendering and I can, I can long term uh, I can get a nice quality rendering out of it. And I'll do that so that you guys can see it in its high resolution later on. Now, you may want to add other types of lighting to your scene. And so I'm going to switch things around a little bit and show you some other lights um, just as a strategy. Right? We're not going to do candlelight until, <laughs> until it's nighttime render. Right? But maybe you want to, to underlight the stairs, for example. And so we'll diff do a different view that's looking kind of toward the stairs this way. And once I get the view that I like, again, I'll save the, the view so that we can see it. This is a glass railing. That's why you can see through it. Uh, and so maybe I want to put some little you know, under lights under the stairs, in which case it's a great opportunity for the use of rectangular lights. So I'll go ahead and add uh, a rectangular light. And I'll place it there there. I'm only going to do the front half of the stair. I do have to make sure that that goes down a little bit so that it's below the stair. So the move, we'll drop it slightly below the stair. And then I have to go into my properties and we'll go to um, the light, 255, 214, 170. Go ahead and say OK. Uh, I want this to be an invisible light. I want it to be in watts. And I'm going to leave it at 30 right now. I told you rectangular lights are a little iffy. It's not the same as just, oh, it's a 30-watt it's a bulb or whatever. You have to adjust the wattage based on the size of the rectangle. And so we're going to go with this as kind of a gut reaction. And so I'll jump back into this view, and I'll render again, and we'll see how it looks. And then we'll go back and adjust that setting. And you're leaving your lights on, so they affect 
Right, I'm leaving all the lights on. The upstairs ones really aren't doing anything because they're they're not within this this view, so I'm not overly worried about it. Not enough to worry about. Okay, so clearly the light is on. I'm guessing it's going to be too bright, and so I'll have to drop the wattage down. That's why I told you that rectangular lights don't correspond. Uh, it has to do with the size. So for the size of this rectangle, 30 watts is really large. And so it's, it's kind of quirky. But there it is. It's working on the, uh, the underside of this stair. Not too bad. Right? I'll take this. I'll maybe drop it in half, 15. And then I can copy this. Yeah, I could array it at an angle. But sometimes it's easier to just, yeah. Let me go to midpoint of the stairs. Somehow near is on. I don't want that. Oh, come on. There. And I can work my way up the stairs. I just needed a different angle. There it is. Anyway, you get the idea. And so now all of those little rectangular lights are installed. And when I did a rendering of this view, I'd get down light in this particular location. Does that kind of make sense? Mm -hmm. OK. So what's your, what's your purpose really today is obviously it makes sense to start putting stuff inside your building. right? Some of you have more things inside than others. OK. Um, you're, you're going to have to work on the outside when we get to that part, right? But for right now, you're in good shape. Uh, and so you want to set up a couple interior views, install some lighting, start to add things like the furniture to your blocks and that sort of thing, and then get a good quality interior rendering. Okay? There's a reason that I'm pushing you guys ahead on these things, is that we're going to end up taking this building and doing line drawings from them, plans, sections, that sort of thing. So the more detail you have, the better those will be down the road. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. OK, so uh, based on feedback that I've gotten in the past from previous semesters, everybody felt that being able to, to model in 3D and then ultimately have some line drawings out of your 3D models was a really important skill to have. So we're, we're front loading this stuff so you can get these ready. And then we can do some drawings. And then you'll come back and do some final renderings for the, for the, the end project. Okay? But you should really be getting to the point where you're adding things like the couches. It should be that detailed at this point. Okay? Now remember, you also have control over what you show. If you don't really want to show a bathroom, then choose renderings that don't show the bathroom. Does that kind of make sense? So pick the pieces that you want to show and show those pieces. And when we get to the plans and the sections, you'll have to add a little bit. But that's, that's not too bad. Okay? Are there any questions about anything? No? All right. Go for it. <laughs>